Okay. Um, so again, welcome to the Moving to Ultra Course View uh, workshop hosted by CIDL. Um, let's see if I get there we go. Uh, my name is Kevin Harris. I'm an instructional support coordinator here at CIDL. Uh, uh, this is my email, kevin.harris at niu.edu. Uh, if you have any questions uh, after this workshop or moving forward uh, with uh, any issues or challenges or questions about Blackboard, um, you can feel free to reach out as well as any other sort of um, teaching technologies that you might have questions about uh, or need support with. Uh, and then I have a, a number here through my, team's, um, uh, through my team's account that you can also call and contact me um, on. Uh, if you're not able to hear at this point, um, there are a couple of options that you can try. Um, I'm going to assume that everyone can. Um, no one has put anything in the chat, so we'll just move on from this one. Uh, and then uh, the agenda for today. Um, so the goal today is to just get an overview of Ultra, uh, look at some of the features, um, and then kind of understand how to make the transition, how to pull information from um, original, if you're using original, how to pull information from original into Ultra, or how to just kind of set up and build your course um, in Ultra as you go, or some combination of the two. And so we'll look at um, making that conversion, we'll build out a shell course, or we'll request a shell course, um, and then we'll look at uh, the way to kind of copy in or, or build different content throughout. Uh, and then if there are questions, uh, we'll have a, a fair amount of time at the end um, that we can deal with. Um, any kind of specific issues or um, areas that you need to focus on within your specific course or organization, um, we can we can take those and build from there. Um, so I guess the first uh, piece uh, is just the overview of Ultra. So Ultra is designed um, to give students a more kind of consistent course view um, across devices, so they can use a tablet or their phone or their computer, uh, and it and it has a very similar and consistent course view and course feel. Um, to them. Um, additionally, uh, currently we have a, a mix of courses being taught in Ultra and in the original course view, and this will just give students a more consistent feel uh, if we're all using the same platform moving forward. Um, the university has been using original course view, I believe, since around 2010, um, and then in 2019 we started to adopt um, Ultra, uh, and then this is the final semester of which courses can be taught in original. So um, they've started to make the, I think a few years ago we started to make that transition. Uh, currently, about 76%, I believe, of the courses are taught in Ultra. Um, and so we're moving courses over um, at the end of this semester and then organizations um, by the end of the school year. So um, again, Ultra has a, a bit of a more of, of a streamlined kind of course view. It feels a little bit more, I guess, contemporary and updated, uh, something more consistent with what students' um, tech use would look like outside of, of Blackboard. And so I think those are some of the, the benefits um, of Ultra over, over the original course view. The other main benefit is that it's being heavily supported by Blackboard, whereas original course view um, is, is not. Some of the developments that are occurring uh, are only happening in Ultra. Um, and so it, it will benefit us to, to make those uh, moves. Or to make that move. Um, so we have a Blackboard Teaching with Blackboard website, um, niu.edu uh, backslash Blackboard. And then if you do backslash, backslash Ultra, you can um, get find Ultra-specific information, including an updated uh, What's New in Ultra uh, link and a features guide. So if there's a feature that you liked in original, you can go on the features guide and look to see if it's in Ultra. Uh, it may be there with limitations, it may be there completely, and, and a few things have been kind of phased out and, and no longer um, exist. So that would be a great place to look. Um, and then uh, in addition, Blackboard's constantly uh, releasing updates, um, specifically in Ultra, um, every month. Uh, I think there have been something like 80 or more updates uh, at this point this year already. Um, and a few of them just came out uh, in the last two days. So you can look at the what's new in Ultra to get um, an idea of like any changes or, or uh, added features that are coming. So they've, they've constantly been updating. Um, they've invested quite heavily in, in kind of continuing to build this out. There's also tutorials um, and, and guides that you can find um, on this page as well uh, and a, uh, an FAQ section uh, that might be helpful. Uh, the features guide looks like this. So. Uh, if things are currently available, you'll see them here in green. If they're looking into it a little bit more, um, 
you'll have it'll say it, it, that it's in research in yellow if it's available but with limitations uh, this would be this is something that you might have been able to use in, in original but now uh it has limitations in ultra you'll see that in blue and then some things have been discontinued and those will appear in red uh, and again this is updated uh, quite frequently and then this is the what's new um, uh, link uh, there's constantly uh, constantly there are new features being added as i said and we will sometimes post or blackboard will post uh, video tutorials or an overview of some of those features uh, we'll look at a few of them today as well uh, and you can see those updates here in this tab other changes that have occurred, especially if you looked at Blackboard Ultra uh, maybe a few years ago uh, and weren't so sure about making the move because it lacked some features, um, there are a few things that have, that have been adjusted. Uh, one of those, uh, and a major one that I think people were looking for, were uh, changes in the gradebook. So now there are multiple um, views that you can use um, in, in the gradebook uh, to, to see student work, to navigate, and, and to kind of build out grading workflows. Um, there's essentially a list view and a grid view. Uh, within the list view, you can do a gradable items view where you can uh, see each of the gradable items that are available. Uh, the due dates, you can post the grades here. Over here uh, with what we call the kebab um, or the three dots or the ellipsis, you can uh, edit. And then now there's actually a feature that wasn't uh, present when the screenshot was taken. There's a, there'll be an up and down arrow next to each of these that you can click and drag and reorder your gradebook, um, which can help, especially if you do a, a transition from original to, to um, ultra, and it has a lot of graded items in it. You may want to move some of those around. Um, editing the gradebook itself, you will find uh, essentially these um, cogs uh, in different views. And if you click on those, you can uh, edit the grade schema of your course, uh, which is uh, customizable. You can make it however your department or, or um, your area uh, builds out their, their grade schema. And then you can also set up your grade book to be total points or to be uh, based on categories or some combination um, within there. So that'll all happen here within the um, within this settings cog. Uh, the other view um, in the list view is the student view. So you can go uh, put it in student view, click on a student, and then you can see all of the students' work. Um, in one space. Um, definitely helpful when you're having conferences with students or office hours and meeting with a student. And then the uh, the other view is more traditional view. This is the view that I personally prefer um, because it looks like every other grade book that I've used, um, which is the this kind of grid layout. And again, you can you'll be able to add uh, and alter things in here as well. So uh, this is a screenshot, obviously, but if I hovered in between two assignments, a little purple plus sign will appear. And I could click that and I could add um, an assignment in there, um, especially if it's something that, that was um, like in class or, or done offline. Uh, that's an easy way to, to kind of make some adjustment, uh, make some adjustments. And this, gives, this just gives you, you um, kind of a clear overview of everything that needs submitted or that has been submitted or that needs posted. Um, so you have, now you have some options that uh, may not have existed in the past. Uh, one other major change, and this, is, this was a hang up for a lot of people, um, when thinking about making the move, um, is nesting. So if you have used original for you know 10 years, you may have been building out one course over those 10 years, and you may have a very intricate uh, kind of folder uh, design or, or kind of folder layout that will have nested folders. In Ultra, you can only have two layers. So you can have um, either a folder or a module. You can have a folder inside of that. Um, there can be documents, files, things within that folder, but there can't be a third layered folder. And so when you're looking at making this transition, if you look at your course in original and you see that you have a lot of nested folders, um, it will flat, when you make that transition, if you if you do a bulk copy or, or a complete course copy, it will flatten that out for you. Um, so it'll leave the first two folders um, and then everything else will get dumped into essentially the folders above them. Uh, until it gets to the two layers. So uh, if you try to do a bulk uh, conversion, there's going to probably be some cleanup depending on your organization. Um, the idea is that students don't have to click around and, and dig to find um, uh, material as that might be deeply nested. Um, it's not something that we have control of. That's just the way that they've set Ultra up. And so uh, it's two layers. And there's some kind of some workarounds or some some 
some things that we can do to uh, kind of rebuild that structure for you and help you as we kind of progress. Uh, if that uh, sounds like something that you might need support with as we kind of build this out. Um, the other thing that, that to consider is if your course is deeply nested, it's probably better to pull content in uh, in smaller chunks as opposed to trying to do a full course copy. And we'll look at that in a second as well. Um, the course migration. So if you want to take your course that's currently in Ultra and just switch it uh, as, a, as a whole into, um, I'm sorry, from original into Ultra, uh, it's not really a, it's not always very clean cut. Depending on how your course is, uh, how it's laid out, um, it, it's not always a straight line. Someone at the, um, I went to the Anthology Conference, which is the, the parent company of Blackboard over, over the summer, and someone there said to think of Ultra as a, a separate learning management system, not an updated version of original. Um, and I think that's probably a fair way to consider it. There's a lot of commonality and they are connected, um, but not everything fits perfectly from one into the other. So um, when you make those uh, moves, you might see uh, some exceptions that pop up. Sometimes they are little like setting pieces that we don't notice and, and it may say that there was an issue, but everything seems to work fine and it probably will work fine. But sometimes there are things that won't uh, come over and we'll look at those as they, as they come up. Um, and then our recommendations are just to uh, look at Ultra. So we're gonna do that today. Um, to build out a plan. Uh, if you have any questions, we have um, a staff here that, that's happy to help uh, with, with any questions or concerns that come up. You can make independent appointments uh, with us. You can go through the, the scheduling service. You can send a question request um, to us and we'll get it. And, and, and ha we typically handle those quite quickly. Um, and then we also are offering uh, the Ultra Transition Academy, uh, which will be coming up. Uh, we just finished one, or we're finishing one this week, and I think the other one starts maybe in two weeks from now. I'll post that at the end so you can um, you can look at it. But it essentially is a kind of a more hands-on um, guided path to everything related to Ultra, and you'll essentially build out a course in, in Ultra over the course of three weeks. You'll have a mentor that you can speak with, either someone from our office or um, another faculty member who who is experienced with Ultra. And you'll meet with them and they can give you some tips and guidance uh, and just serve as a resource for you. Uh, let's see. I think, how do we want to do this? Let's, uh, so one thing I'll, I'll point out before we just jump in, I think the best thing to do probably is just to actually jump in and, and build one out um, and then uh, take questions as, the, as they come. So uh, what you'll find in Ultra are, are and they feel a little bit hidden sometimes, are, are little plus signs. Um, and essentially you'll have to kind of hover around to a line and you'll see a plus sign. And this is how you'll add uh, content. So I think in original course view, there was a toolbar at the top and you, you could click there and then you'd get a drop down with everything in it. Um, Ultra, uh, you find the plus sign, you click, and then you click create, and then you'll get this menu that pops up over here to the right. So it, it uh, on the surface appears that there are fewer features. Um, but let's say, you know, assessments, you have these two types of assessments, tests and assignments. Once you create one, you can go in uh, as you're creating it and you can click uh, the category and you could make it, uh, instead of a test, you could make it a quiz or a, a writing assignment or, or an essay or however you wanna categorize it, you can do within. They just keep it essentially to kind of two um, kind of base templates, which are almost exactly the same. Uh, and then you can kind of customize it uh, from the inside. Um, this is also where you'll, if you want to copy in content, you can do that from here. You can upload content uh, from your computer or from the cloud. And then we also have the content market. So if you work with um, a publisher, uh, we might have an LTI for that publisher or um, Kaltura videos. This is where you would add those as well. Uh, if you use Yellow Dig or um, Badger or any of those other types of add-ons, uh, you find those in here. Um, adding a shell, uh, the, the workflow that we're going to recommend um, is to start and work in a shell to begin with. So a shell is essentially a, a private course. It has all the features of a regular course, uh, except for um, it's a lot easier to fix mistakes. So if you want to bulk copy everything from your course in um, original, we highly recommend that you copy it into a shell. And then if you don't like the way that it looks, you can just delete the shell or you can uh, clean it up. Whereas if you um, 
convert it completely over, uh, it, it's really, really difficult to go back, to switch back. So if you switch it from, uh, you take your course and you do the conversion from original to ultra, it's really difficult to switch it back over. Uh, and then the shell is also kind of private. It gives you a chance to kind of build things out, test pieces, um, and then you can copy those. Once you get it how you like it, you can then copy that into um, from from an ultra shell to an ultra course very easily uh, and it takes about two minutes. So um, that's the path that we're going to to recommend uh, and I'm an, and that I'm actually going to walk you through uh, in just a second. There is the option to convert, um, as I said. So if you're in original course view and your course is locked, so you, um, up at, you'll see this up at the top of that menu, if this little padlock is locked, you can click this pencil uh, and then it'll ask you if you want to try the course view and you can click try ultra course view. Uh, it will then tell you that your course is converting. Essentially, it, depending on how large or small your course is, if it, you only have a few things in it, uh, it'll convert quite quickly. If it's a large course, it might take a few minutes. Um, then you refresh the page, and then you can see what your course looks like in um, in Ultra. You can then decide to keep it or go back. If you keep it, like I said, uh, it's very difficult to transition it back into um, original course view. And, and it's likely that things will get kind of disturbed. So you definitely, uh, we definitely don't recommend doing that mid-semester. Um, but uh, even, even just at any point, it's probably better just to put it into a shell first and then build out from that shell. And it's, the workflow is equally as, um, uh, they're, they're very similar workflows. So we'll, we'll recommend the other. This is an option you can do, and some people just want to do it. Um, but once you get it into uh, Ultra, especially if you have like a really kind of complex and, and built out course with a lot of assignments, you'll find that you're going to have to do a fair amount of cleanup, typically in the grade book uh, and with organization in the folders. Um, as I said, you'll see these little plus signs. This is where you add um, pieces. You have essentially two um, uh, buckets, I guess, to, to kind of organize content. Those are folders and learning modules. So a folder is just uh, kind of a resource dump. You have your folder and you put in the content that you want in the folder. Um, a learning module is uh, kind of similar, but with a, with a learning module, you can dictate um, a pathway. So you can, um, uh, you can set it up so that students have to complete one thing and then the next and then the next and then the next in a sequential order. Um, it, I, it could, that can help with organization if you if you prefer uh, your layout to be that way. If you use Blackboard as kind of a, a document storage, a place for your syllabus and, and some some resources, um, then then folders work very well for that as well. So um, you have some those two options really for that. Um, and then uh, and again, you'll add those by clicking a plus sign, and then you would click folder or you would click learning module. The other one is a is what they call a document or an ultra document. It's essentially like a kind of like a web page. So it's um, it will open up. It'll look very similar to a Word document. You can use all the text editing features. You can also import uh, Microsoft documents into it, or PDFs, uh, or links. You can add images and videos. Um, it's kind of a third way that if you wanted to kind of organize information, um, that that's a tool that's a, that's available and, it, and it's quite useful. And if you use Ultra Documents, it's also friendly with Blackboard Ally. Uh, and so um, students can then access that information in different formats. So they could download it as an EPUB or an audio file. Um, there's a couple other uh, types that they can use to access that as well. Um, as far as assessments, I mentioned this before, we have uh, tests and assignments. Um, and there are a number of features that you can uh, kind of set and customize within these. There's also discussions, um, but they, they look almost exactly the same if you open them up and then you can set categories for anything that you want. So I think it's going to give you like eight, eight or nine preset categories. Um, and then if you have categories that you use, um, let's say you wanted to do simulations as part of your course, you could set a category as simulations and then you would post it and it would appear to students as a simulation, not as a test. Um, and then copying items, uh, the same type of deal. There are several ways that you can do it. Um, one would be uh, on the main page at the top, there's this ellipsis here, and then you can click it and then copy in that way. Or you can go uh, with this plus sign and click copy content and add it that way. If you, um, if you do it this way, 
you can kind of pick and choose exactly where you want things to land. Otherwise, you have to move them around, which isn't that hard. You can click, drag, uh, click, hold, and then drag and drop uh, to move content. Um, and then the bulk copy, as we said, if you do the bulk copy, you put copy, you just click your um, the course that you want, and then you'll click this little arrow to the right, and it will add that, um, it'll pull all of that in uh, to your course. And then you, you can go through and kind of adjust things as needed. Due dates is a thing that gets, that catches a lot of uh, people off guard. It will, sometimes it, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it may have adjusted the due date. So let's say you had an assignment four weeks into the course. It might put that assignment four weeks into your next course. Um, and then maybe you didn't intend to use that. But sometimes in the grade book, it'll, it'll appear way farther over. And then if students are receiving automatic zeros for late assignments, um, it'll give them a zero and then their grades get uh, you know, skewed by that zero that you didn't intend and it causes some, some confusion. So it's worth, once you do it, to kind of go through and, and check your due dates and check um, you know, the release conditions and all of those. Then there's also a student preview, uh, which is really useful. You can kind of set it, uh, you can go into the student preview, you can take the assessments or the assignments and open them, uh, save that and then go in and, and look at uh, those assignments from the teacher's perspective um, and, and look at how to, the grade flows work and, and how to add comments or, or uh, update things as you go. So uh, a nice feature that's there, just kind of, you know, give you a, a little bit of a preview of what your students are going to see. Um, and that's it here. Yeah, go ahead. Did you have a question? Okay. Um, so if you have a question, you know, feel free to jump on uh, or throw it in the chat. Um, I moved through this pretty quickly because I want to actually spend some time looking at um, uh, at an actual Blackboard shell. So let me stop sharing the screen. And then I'm going to add this one. So we're going to share the screen here. And all right, this is the one we want. So um, from this screen here, uh, we can, um, this is where you'll land essentially, right? You'll land on the institution page when you come to Blackboard. Um, and then from here, uh, you can go to your courses by clicking courses. If it has uh, any sort of color in the tab from this list view, it's in ultra. Uh, if it's gray like this, it's in original. So that's one indicator to know uh, what uh, course view your course is currently in. Um, you can also use this view uh, and you can customize these images. Uh, and as of two days ago, there's now, uh, we now have a resource of um, free, uh, copyright free images that we can use and add uh, very quickly. The other area that you're going to need um, is uh, tools, sorry. Uh, if you go to tools uh, and, and you want to create a uh, shell, you click tools and then you go to uh, Blackboard faculty tools. And then you go to my shells. This is the same way that you would request the course, um, but you go to my shells, click my shells. And then up here at the top, there's a plus sign uh, request new shells and you click that. A benefit of using shells is that they're available instantly. So if you request a new course or you request a new organization, uh, it, it's gonna take some time probably for you to uh, be able to access that. But if you make a shell, it'll load uh, almost instantly. So let's, it uh, doesn't matter what we call it. You can, you can put your department, you can label it as your courses um, and you can change this later. So it doesn't matter too much uh, what you call it. We're just gonna call it um, practice. And then uh, here you can select ultra or original. Um, we're gonna use ultra and then we hit submit. And we'll give it a second. Um, and then if we go back to our courses, 
and we refresh. Uh, here it is. It's appeared. So let me click it uh, and open. Now there are a few things um, that we can do in here. One is uh, we can customize the course image. Um, so if you want to make your course kind of stand out a little bit, or you want to um, make it kind of stand out so you can, <laughs> for me, I can I put these on here and then I can navigate between my courses a little easier. Um, you can click uh, over here under Edit Display Settings. Um, and this is, a, again, a new feature here. Um, you can click uh, this picture here at the top, right? And then you can add a picture from your device to make the banner, or you can click this drop down and you can use a stock image uh, from Unsplash. So these are copyright uh, free images that you can use and you can kind of choose what you want. Um, I taught high school history for uh, 12 years. And so I'll pick a history themed image to use. Uh, and then you can kind of adjust it once it gets loaded in here uh, and pick the part that you want highlighted and then click save. And then you can um, click save here. And then now we'll have a course banner that appears at the top of the page, um, but it also will appear in the in our courses page um, as a as a place, uh, I'm sorry, as, as kind of an image that we can see as we click into the course. Um, adding content, I think, is probably the piece that most people are concerned with. Uh, and you can start right here. So you land on this page with, in originally you landed on a page where you had um, some tabs over on the left-hand side, and then you had to pick which one to go into. Um, Ultra, this landing page is right in the content page. So it's course content. Uh, and if you click the add content here, um, then you can decide what you want to do. Do you want to create something or do you want to copy, upload, and so on? So um, first, let's look at uh, just how to create and add um, a learning module. So we have a learning module up here at the top. We can name it. So we can call it, I don't know, week one. Um, however you'd like to organize your course, you can uh, customize the, the name. You can make it visible. You can add your description, um, which will appear underneath uh, week one. So description. You may put essential questions or, or topics or uh, really anything you want there. Here, if you want to force a sequence, so that means they have to do item one before they can do two, before they can do three, and so on, you can set that. And then you can also um, add an image here as well. <clears throat> and you can use. Uh, it's exactly the same. So you can use a stock image uh, from from Upslash. Uh, let's just add another one related to the Inca. There, perfect. Um, and then here, as I said, we set visibility, and then we hit save. And then we have our uh, module. Um, now you can add, if you want to add um, kind of on the main uh, section here, you click the plus and you can do the same thing. Uh, and if you want to add something within that module, um, if you click on it, it'll give you an, a drop down here uh, and you see this plus sign and this will appear within the module. So we could add a folder here if we wanted to. So we would click create folder. Um, visible to students, call it folder one, um, hit save. They don't give you the option to add images to the folders. You can't color coordinate them. Um, they just look like this. And then if you want to add something else within the module, you can click um, again back in the module and click the plus sign that goes all the way across. Or you can click this one here, uh, which will put it in the folder. So you kind of got to hover around to find those. Uh, but if you're unsatisfied with where something lands, uh, you can always hover over here to the left, click on uh, that area there, and then you can drag and drop it uh, somewhere else. I'm going to leave it in here uh, just for demonstration. Uh, and then if I want to add something in here, again, I go to create, 
And now you can see that there's no option for a folder uh, or module because it's got level one and that's level two for nesting. So I can no longer nest within this folder. So that's as deep as it goes. Um, but I can add, like I said, if I wanted to add a test or an assignment in here, I can do that. Um, so let's take a look at one of those. So we'll say add a test. Um, essentially what you get with the test, this is identical essentially to what it looks like with um, an assignment. You get a plus sign here that you can add um, text, directions if you'd like. You can add different types of questions. You can reuse questions. Um, you can pull in a file. So if I was gonna add, um, let's say I have an assignment that I wanna use, uh, I wanna go here. Uh, maybe maybe this is, here's an assignment. Uh, so I wanna add this piece in here. Um, now I can set it so that students can, this is a new newer feature as well. They no longer have to download. Uh, they can actually open it uh, within, open this uh, document within the assignment itself. So um, you hit save and then it's there. Uh, here you can allow students to add comments uh, during the assessment or not, that's up to you. Um, you can set your due dates over here. So you can, this pops out. Uh, you can set the due date and the time. You can prohibit late submissions if you'd like. Uh, you can prohibit new attempts. Um, you can allow class conversations. Uh, you could choose this to collect submissions offline. So if you have a in-class paper, but you want it to still appear in the gradebook, this is how you could, one way that you could go about doing that. Once you build out your questions, um, you can choose how they appear. You can set it up so that students can't go back. Um, so they have to answer one question at a time in order. Um, you can set it up so it randomizes the questions or randomizes the answers. Uh, you can mark it as a formative assessment if you would like. And then here's what I was saying. You can, even though it only tells you test or assignment, if you click here, you can see that there's homework, exam, journal, uh, presentation, quiz. And you can also add more to these. It really is, it's not actually appearing on your screen. Interesting. Um, anyway, there's a drop down here that I'm seeing. I'm not sure why it's not appearing over there. Um, but it gives you all of these added um, categories that, that you might want to use. You can set, set it for points or um, percentages or complete, incomplete, or letter grades. Uh, and then you can set the total number of points uh, entirely up to you. And then um, you can set time limits. You can assign it to groups. You can add safe assign for originality reports. And you can also add rubrics. Uh, the rubrics are quite nice. Um, let's see if I add a grading rubric. I have to create them. Uh, but essentially, they look like this. And you can kind of customize them. Um, and then you can essentially change any of this to be however you prefer your rubrics to look. And then you can use it across your courses or across multiple assignments and so on. Uh, it's a nice feature. Uh, that's there. So let's say I save here. Um, and now my test appears here. It's got a, a, a dash through it, uh, which means it's not visible to students at the moment. So I can fix that by clicking on the eyeball and making it visible to students. Um, and then if I want to grade this, I can look, I'll click into the assignment is one way. Um, and then I can click submissions and it will show me all the submissions of students that have enrolled in my course. Um, since there's no one enrolled, I can't see it. But you can see student activity. And then if you have a um, you know, number of questions, you can also look at uh, question analysis as well. Um, so that's adding uh, or essentially building within the course and how you would do that. Copying um, is done in, in a similar way. If you wanna do a bulk copy, you can go up here to the right across from course content, uh, click the three dots, and then you can um, uh, import content or you can copy items from here. The other way to do it is to go uh, and just click the plus sign, and then you can click copy content from there. So um, CIDL has a, a template, if you're interested in um, uh, using a template to kind of build out your course. Uh, it has a useful number of resources that are already built out for you, uh, as well as uh, kind of a, an example module that you can use. 
So if you want to bulk copy something in, uh, in its entirety, you would just click, I'll start over from the, from the main screen here. You click the plus, and then you click copy content, and then all of your other courses and shells will appear. Um, you can, if you left click, I'm sorry, if you click to the left of that, you'll see that it appears over here, uh, and then you can click start copy, and it will copy in everything that's in that course. Uh, and as I said, if you have things that are deeply layered or you have a lot of assignments, it's probably going to require a little bit of cleanup. Um, this is a template, so I'm just going to copy it all in uh, at once. And so all you do is click Start Copy, and it will uh, set out to copy it. This will take might take a few minutes because there are a couple of pieces uh, that that need to be brought over. Um, so we'll we'll let that go for a second. Uh, if you want to just copy um, something in a more kind of granular way, you go about it the same way. You click copy. Um, and let's say I want to go into this this course here, shell assessments. Um, I can I can either click on it um, and then I can pick uh, any of the folders that I want. So let's say I'll go into content here. And let's just say I wanted to add this discussion post and uh, this test. So I can click those two and then start copy, and it will just bring in only those two items. So that's how you would copy an individual thing. Um, in my opinion, uh, it's really useful to, you might want to copy parts of your course at a time. So let's say you might want to copy the first two weeks worth of material or the first module worth of material, or the first unit worth of material in, look at how it comes in, make the adjustments, and then go back and add uh, the next one. Um, that way you're kind of, you can fix any challenges that come up uh, more easily than if you bulk import everything and things get moved around and the grade book gets a little bit wonky. Picking and choosing a couple pieces at a time to move in, um, I think is uh, kind of a beneficial approach. So this should be ready to go now. Excellent. So this is the template um, and you have access to this. Uh, if you're interested, I'll have a, um, a link at the, at the end of the slides. You can um, submit a request and we'll add you this um, as copy only. So you can't, um, there's no, there's no concern about anybody altering the template. It, you'll just be able to copy it in uh, to any course that you want and as much or as little of it as you'd like. So there's a, a folder that, that's hidden um, to, to users, um, which just gives you a little bit of information about um, the template. There are also some course tours in here where some faculty members will walk through um, aspects of their course, uh, which might be helpful if you're looking for ideas on structure and such. Um, there's a welcome page. If you click the welcome page, which is a module, um, it gives you a get started. And then if you wanted to do a video tour, you could use that. If you don't want something, you can uh, click out here on the uh, the three dots and then you can click delete. So maybe you say, I'm not gonna make a video tour for my course. Um, you could delete and then it's gone. Um, or you can, as I said, you can hide things. So there may be things that you want access to or you want to use at a later time. You can um, just click the eyeball and make them hidden from students. Or you could set release conditions. So you could say, I want this to be available on November 1st. And you set the release conditions and you set the release date uh, for a specific uh, date and time. You can also set release conditions for performance. So let's say you give the students a quiz. Um, and then maybe you have a thing you want them to do after the quiz. If they pass it, you can set the release conditions that something opens if they score you know, 80% or above. And then maybe you want them to do some kind of remedial work. If they didn't pass it, you can have another thing that opens, like a, maybe a link or something to uh, content that you want them to review if they score you know, below that. So it gives you, uh, you know, some options on, on how to, to structure and, and make things available to students. Um, there's a the course information tab here. Um, so here's a, a spot. These are the altered documents. Um, go into one of those. Um, you can add uh, content here. So let's say you just wanted to add your syllabus. You can click add content or you can upload from computer. I have one on my computer. So I'm going to click that. Um, this is a 10th grade history syllabus that I used to use. I can set it to be view and download or view only or download only. Um, I usually just do it with both options. Um, and then students can download um, or they can um, open it right here and see it in line. 
Um, and then now the syllabus is in. Um, if I had other documents in here, I would be able to click on these arrows and move them up and down if I wanted to reorder um, the layout. Uh, and then the template also has, um, you know, any sort of policies that you might build out in your syllabus. Um, and then some of these are just uh, copyright information, uh, net etiquette, academic integrity, nice things to have in, in um, uh, on your Blackboard page. And these are already built out for you, so you can go into academic integrity. And there's already information here and a link to um, the NIU statement um, from the graduate catalog. and. Uh, some other integrity tools that you can access. So uh, these are already built out. You don't have to do anything to them. And again, you can keep them, delete them. If you wanted to move them, like I said, there are these dots over here that appear to the uh, left. You just click and hold, and then you can drag and drop anything. You can also drag and drop things from your desktop in um, if you had files and they will they will land in as well. So there's also a template for a module layout. Um, and that module layout looks like this, um, with essentially uh, an intro and objectives. And there's a guide here if you wanted to just copy paste yours in. Um, then there's also like a readings folder that's built in and an activities and assignments folder. So if you take the um, uh, the Ultra uh, Academy, the Ultra Transition Academy, um, the the layout of that is is very similar to this and then there's student support information um that that's just kind of built into the template and then lastly this is for you um and it's just essentially help things uh related to blackboard uh the one other thing that you might want to add um are links to ltis or or other uh, material and you do that by clicking uh the plus and then you can go to Content Market. And this is where you'll find things um, like Cengage, or if you're using Badger, uh, or if you're using a textbook publisher, uh, they might have a link in here, um, or Kaltura videos, Kaltura video quizzes. Um, so you can embed them this way. Sometimes when you copy, uh, in fact, I think every time when you copy from original to ultra, it might not pull in your uh, videos. So you can just click Embed, and now it will be added uh, to my new course. And I'll refresh this. Yeah, so there it is at the top. And then again, if I wanted to move it, I would just hover over here, click and pull. Um, the other tool, so that I think that's the, the most recommended workflow is to build it out, um, add if you have material already built out in original course view, kind of pull that in in smaller, more granular chunks uh, and make sure that the layout works the way you want. Um, and then the grade book, if you go up here, you can see the grade book. I only have the one test in here. Um, and again, if I wanted to do that in student preview, I don't have any students, so I can't see it. Um, I would just click that students tab. Uh, or uh, up here, I can click uh, the grid view, and then I would get the grid view with all the students down here. Um, the I think one other thing to look at uh, before I stop talking is um, if if you wanted to let's go into this this so this is in original course view. Uh, if you wanted to look and see uh, as kind of a quick um idea of what it might look like when you bring it in you can uh make your course unavailable and then click this pencil up here um to experience the new learn it says uh and then you can try ultra course view like this now again if you um it's going to convert here if you click uh that you want to maintain this once we get in here it will convert your course all the way over and you will will have a very difficult time if at all uh to to get it back to um, original. So the recommended way is to create a shell and then pull it into the shell. Um, but this is an option that some people choose to take. I'm going to refresh. Usually it's pretty quick because I don't have that much in there. Uh, 
here it is. Um, so the conversion has taken place. And then now my course appears um, in Ultra. Uh, one thing is that um, I had a fair number of folders um, embedded here as a, as a practice and uh, they get kind of pushed out. So um, I, I would have to go in and then kind of tidy that up, but there, I don't have much in here. This is just kind of a, a practice thing. So those are the, the, I think the main features and the main ways to uh, transition. Um, we have 13 minutes left on this. And so I think it's best now to um, see if you have questions or areas that you need help with. If you need to request a shell, it might be uh, a really useful um, thing to do now. Um, and then, um, you know, build from there. And I'm, I'm happy to help with anything that specifically pops up with you. So I will stop talking um, and, and give you a chance now. Hi, Kevin, this is Emily. Thank you for all that information. I just wanted to, um, I guess, check about requesting the shell if that it pretty much looks the same if I'm doing that through an organization, because I actually don't have any courses. I have an organization that I'm using. Yeah, so if you, you may still be able to request the shell um, in the same way. So tools, Blackboard faculty tools, um, and then request shell, my shells request shell. Um, sometimes staff uh, don't have access to this. Um, and so if you wanted a shell this way, I can uh, make one and share it to you. But if you want to add um, your new organization, if you go to uh, doit.niu.edu, and then you come to um, submit a ticket. So it's in this kind of first little paragraph here. And then um, request services is up here uh, in this top toolbar. And then you can click add or remove Blackboard org. Okay. And then if you wanna add a new organization, uh, you just click add new organization and then you put in your information here. And then in, in this purpose, it's useful to say that, um, you know, please open this in, in ultra course view um, to make sure they, op uh, sometimes they'll open it in um, original and sometimes it appears um, instructor's choice and it, it's kind of some more steps. So here you could just type, um, you know, please open an original course view. And that's how you can get the actual new org requested. But you still should be able to create a shell. And like I said, if you can't, I can uh, make one for you and add you to it. And then you can work around. It's, it's uh, some similar, it's, it's mostly similar. Um, they, some of the words are different, so it's um, participants instead of students, I think, and a few things like that, but uh, it's mostly the same. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or, or concerns? All right, I know I move pretty fast through this, um, and I, I talk fast, uh, especially when I'm presenting. So I apologize if I was going too fast uh, for anything. But if you have other questions that come up, uh, we are um, very happy to help here at CIDL. Um, our website uh, is here, niu.edu slash uh, There's a ton of resources on there, a lot of tutorial videos and walkthrough videos and articles on the different features and how to use them. If you want to use the template um, that I showed, uh, which is, again, I think an excellent kind of starting point, uh, and it provides a lot of resources that may be tedious to build. Um, so it's nice to just get those. Uh, you can go to sidle.niu.edu slash ask, um, and there's a prompt and just say, um, you know, please share um, the Sidle template with me. And, and then you will, somebody will get that request and, and they will add you to the template. Um, we have uh, workshops, um, new workshops every month. Um, this workshop runs, we're offering it every month, uh, and sometimes a couple times a month, um, but there are others as well um, that you can see on our website. Uh, some of them are teaching specific, some of them are technology or Blackboard specific. Um, there's a variety of different ones that we offer monthly. 
Uh, and then we also offer one-on-one -on -one consultations. So you can submit a request uh, with a question and we can respond to your question, or you can schedule a time to meet with one of us um, and we're happy to help. You can also drop in. There's always someone in the office uh, every day, uh, typically a few people every day, um, and you can uh, drop in as well. Uh, or you can set up a time and we can call you um, on Teams or on, on uh, audio chat if you prefer, uh, however you prefer to, to set those up. Uh, and the last plug I'm gonna give is we have the um, Ultra Transition Academy coming up. Um, let me see if I can get the link. Uh, here it is. Uh, from October 30th to November 19th. Um, and as I said, it is uh, kind of a more expanded version of what I covered today um, and has, uh, it will, it will, you will work with a mentor and you will essentially build out a course starting with uh, designing that course on a document and then building it in, in Ultra uh, and essentially walk you through the main features um, that, that you would want or need to use. Uh, and there's the, um, the link that you could go to um, if you would like to register for that. And apart from that, uh, that's all I have. Thank you for coming. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me directly, kevin.harris at niu.edu, or um, you know, follow any of these pathways as well. Uh, and we're happy to help. Thanks, Kevin. This is Emily again. I have a um, two quick things. So one, I did just try to request a shell, and I, um, I'm staff. So it did say okay. that I don't have access. Um, OK. I will make one and add you to it. Uh, let me, give me one second here. I'm gonna end this recording.